the actual lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Ibn Abdul Muttalib Ibn Hashim Ibn Abdi Mana Ibn Qusay Ibn Kilab Ibn Murra Ibn Ilyas Ibn Mudar Ibn Ghalib Ibn Fihr Ibn Malik Ibn Al Nadar Ibn Kinana Ibn Khuzayma Ibn Mudrika Ibn Ilyas Ibn Mudar Ibn Nizar Ibn Ma'ad Ibn Adnan. This is the exact 20. That is his lineage as has been agreed upon. That our Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah astafa kinanata min waladi Ismail. Allah chose kinana from all of the descendants of Ismail. Wastafa Quraishan min kinana. And he chose Quraysh from kinana. Wastafa min Quraishin bani Hashim. And he chose the Banu Hashim from the Quraysh. Wastafani min bani Hashim. And he chose me from the Banu Hashim. So we believe that the lineage of our Prophet ﷺ is the best and the most noble lineage ever. That nobody had a more noble lineage. And this was very important, especially for the Arabs of his time. Because for them, everything depended upon lineage. Everything, uh, his status, his nobility, the, any cause he was fighting for, everything depended upon his lineage. So our Prophet ﷺ was chosen to be of the best lineage. Now get to the Prophet's direct and immediate parents, and these are of course Abdullah and Amina. And so the daughter of Wahab Amina and the daughter of Abdul Muttalib Abdullah, they agreed to get married. So Abdullah got married to Amina just a few days before the caravan departed. And it is said that he barely spent three or five days with her before he had to go with the caravan. He spent barely a week with this new bride of his and he then departed on the caravan as you know never to be seen again. So they had an extremely short marriage because as soon as they got married he had to leave for the caravan. Catch the caravan go all the way to Syria. On the way back from Syria he fell severely ill with the caravan and he was slowing the caravan down. And by the time they got to Yathrib which was later to become Medina he said to the caravan, I'm slowing you down. I have relatives in Yathrib. I will stay with them until I recover. You go back to Mecca. By the time the caravan got back to Mecca, Amin is all excited. My husband's coming back. I want to tell him that I'm pregnant. And lo and behold, he's not with the caravan. So most likely Abdullah did not even know that Amin was pregnant. In fact, if we believe this version of the event, which is Ibn Sa'ad, he could not have known because he was only with her for four days. So by the time the caravan comes back, she is told that he is sick and he should be coming in a few weeks after he recovers. And then the next news comes that he has in fact passed away in Yathrib. So Amina becomes a widow at the age of 18, 19, young age, maybe even younger than this, carrying the offspring of Abdullah. And the Prophet Sallallahu is born in the famous year of the elephant, in the famous hadith of Sahih Muslim, that a man asked the Prophet why do you fast on Mondays? He said, this was the day I was born on. And this was the day that revelation began to me. I.e. Iqra came down on Monday. So we know for a fact he was born on a Monday. There's only one hadith that mentions the birth of the Prophet. He mentions his own birth. And it is a hadith narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad's book of hadith, and it is an authentic hadith. That when my mother was carrying me, this is the first thing, that when my mother was carrying me, and in one version, وضعتني, gave birth to me. So there are both versions are mentioned. But the point is when he was either in the room or when he came out, my mother saw a light emanate from her that cast its light or it reached all the way to the city of Busra in the land of Syria. So the Prophet is saying that my mother saw a light either in a dream or a physical light, she doesn't mention what, coming from her that came all the way and illuminated the, the palaces or the city of Busra, the palaces of the cities of Busra in Sham, in Syria. Now, what is the significance of this? Scholars have tried to understand why Syria and why you know, this light coming from Amin. Of course, the light is him, the light is the Prophet that she's carrying something that will bring light to Busra of Sham. Allah knows best, but there's some things that have been derived here that Sham or Syria is mentioned because Syria is a blessed land according to our religion. Do realize that the Islamic Syria is not modern Syria. Sham is broader than modern day Syria. So it is true that our religion considers Sham to be a holy land overall. And of course, the children of Ishaq, Bani Israel, the Jews, they always considered that region to be holy and in particular, Palestine region to be holy. To this day, they do that, right? So we also believe that there is a type of 
holiness in these lands. And that, and that is why Allah says in the Quran, Subhana the Asra bi Abdihi Layla min al Masjid al Harami ila al Masjid al Aqsa aladi barakna hawlahu. There is barakah around Masjid al Aqsa. This is Sham. Sham, there is barakah over there. And the Prophet predicted that Sham will remain a fortress of Islam. There's always going to be people of Islam in uh, Sham. And amazingly, Sham was the first major province that was conquered after the Arabian Peninsula. Right after the death of the Prophet in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, Sham was conquered. And one of the first cities, maybe even the first city that was outside the Arabian Peninsula is Busra. So there is an indication that the Prophet is going to challenge status quo. Sham was the right arm of the Byzantine Empire. I mean, Damascus, do you understand? We think of Damascus as an Arab land, an Arab civilization. Before the coming of Islam, Damascus was the right hand of the Byzantine Empire. It was the jewel of, of the Romans. It was where everything happened, commerce and trade and culture and civilization, everything was there. It was impossible for the Arabs to think that one day Damascus would be the core of Arab civilizations, the Umayyad's capital was Damascus. So by showing the light going to the borders of Syria, there is an indication that Islam is going to conquer this land. It will take over. And that's exactly what happened. That the very first land that was conquered was the land of uh, Syria. And so his grandfather circumcised him on the seventh day. And his grandfather Abdul Muttalib held a feast for him. And his grandfather chose the name Muhammad, which was a unique and unusual name. Some scholars say that this was an unknown name to the Arabs. And one group of scholars says, well, it was known, but it was not common. And this seems to be the stronger opinion. Because there are people whose references we have, whose name was Muhammad. But it was a very uncommon name. And there was nobody in Mecca by that name. Nobody in Mecca. So when people asked Abdul Muttalib, why are you calling him by a name that nobody knows? Nobody's heard of. Why don't you call him one of your standard names of your fathers and, and forefathers? He said, I want him to be praised by the people of the earth as I want him to be praised by the people of the heavens. Muhammad means the one who is praised. I want him to be praised by the people of the earth as I want him to be praised by the people in the heavens.